Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's lovely to see you all on the second Sunday of Lent. Welcome to Emmanuel. And grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Our opening hymn is Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. <laughs> Tomorrow and the next day, 
for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Let's just pray for the children going into Sunday school. Father God, we thank you for our young people with us this morning. We pray that you will bless them as they learn more about you and as, as we concentrate on your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. One evening, arriving home, I was lucky enough to see two foxes in the church driveway. Maybe some of you have seen the odd fox here and there prowling around your gardens too. They are, after all, a cunning predator. And here is Jesus referring to Herod as a predator at his warning from the Pharisees. For the most part, Herod has cast a dark shadow across the page, but now he comes into the limelight as a direct threat. The warning could, of course, have been just a ploy on the part of the Pharisees to get rid of Jesus by frightening him in this way. In any case, it has been decided that he will face his death in Jerusalem and nowhere else. Herod is not going to change any of that. Jesus' kingdom is not of this world, as he told Pilate later on. The Father is in control, not Herod or the Pharisees. So Jesus is not moved by any threat. Jesus is so free before all threats of suffering and persecution. The source of this freedom was his passionate awareness of who he was and what he was called to do. He knows that his life is part of a much larger plan. He will do his work, including the healing of people and the liberation from evil forces. When the time is right, and not before, he will face his passion and death. He will attain his end, where end has a double meaning of the end of his life on earth and his being brought to perfection through his suffering and death. And then Jesus goes on to pray for the city that will be the scene of his death. It is a city that has many times in the past mistreated and killed those sent by God to bring his message. Jesus speaks tenderly of his being like a mother hen who protectively gathers her chickens under her wings. In times of fires in farmyards, farmers have found charred hens who have given their lives to save their chicks. Such is the courageous protection of a mother hen. But sadly, and to their own detriment, they reject him, as they rejected many prophets before. Jesus longs for them to accept him, but they are not willing, and he will not force himself on them. Then he foretells something that must have seemed to be both blasphemous and impossible. Your temple will be abandoned. Yet, just 40 years after Jesus' death, the temple will meet its destruction, never again to be rebuilt. Finally, he tells them that they will not see him again until they themselves greet him by saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This could refer to his triumphal entry into Jerusalem at the beginning of Holy Week, or to his final coming as judge and Lord of all. The one who gave himself for the many, who loves us like a mother hen, whom we can be vulnerable with. 
our lives are in God's hands, no matter how violent this world gets, which Jesus knew only too well. Jesus longs for all to turn to him and know his kingdom, love, peace and forgiveness. That Calvary peace carved in the language of nails and etched in blood. The worst violent punishment of the time turned into a place of nothing but love for you and me, for our cities, our towns and everyone. The cross calls us to seek love in the darkest places. Heather Smethurst on Facebook had heard about love in the darkest places hitting our headlines. She had just been listening to a two minute recording of miraculous things happening in the Ukraine that are stopping the advance of the Russian army. She said, for all those praying but feeling overwhelmed and not knowing what to pray for, prayer works. Pray that the Lord is glorified. She said a load of Russian parachutists were dropped, but a big wind blew them back over the border into Belarus. One tank drove round and round the village for half a day, terrifying the inhabitants. So an old man walked out and said, why are you doing this? My nerves are in shreds. The tank soldier said, I want to run out of diesel so I can tell my commander why I couldn't complete my mission. They are even saying nature is working in favour of the Ukraine. A storm is preventing an advance via the Black Sea. There are things happening in answer to prayer, not that we will hear it on the mainstream news, which will concentrate on the negative and worst of images as if nothing good is happening at all. It is. The president of the Ukraine said, bomb our churches, if you will, but you will not take away our faith. Look for love in the darkest places. If we want to be like Jesus, then we too need to long for people to come to know that Calvary love for themselves including Putin, and all those involved in conflict. Let's not forget what's happening in the Yemen also. Unless we start seeing common humanity, we will never learn as the human race. It cost Jesus his life to demonstrate love. What does it cost us?
We say together, Father, give our life and grace. We can now sin against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own difficult heart. We have wounded each other and the heart of our weakness. We are now sorry and ashamed and have repented for the last For the sake of Sing a simple armor's day to the tune of Glory Be to Jesus.
from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. David will come and lead us in our intercession. And focusing our first day on the conflict in Ukraine. Merciful Father, once again our world is being shattered by conflict. We pray for peace in our own country and we remind ourselves that we have always shown compassion to those being uprooted by war. We pray that our government will offer as much help as possible to refugees from this dreadful war and that we as individuals will feel able to give whatever help we can. Please listen to us, O oh Lord. Father God, King of all nations, I cry out to you now for the people of Ukraine. I ask you to rescue those who are vulnerable from the hands of their enemies they may live without fear before you all their days. Please listen to us, O Lord. Lord of Lords and Prince of Peace, our politicians are predicting the biggest war in Europe since 1945. And we simply cry out to you urgently to write another story in our time. Draw the dark machinations of evil men. Give wisdom beyond human wisdom to peacemakers seeking an equitable and less violent way. May politicians exercise the wisdom from above, which is peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, and full of mercy. Please listen to us, O Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray for the church in Ukraine, a nation in which 70% of the population call themselves Christian. Give our many brothers and sisters in that nation courage in this crisis, that they may proclaim the good news of your kingdom, bind up broken hearts, and bring comfort to all who mourn. Please listen to us, O Lord. shatter spears, and burn shields with fire. And so I ask you now to save the lives of many people in Ukraine, no matter what side of that conflict they may be on. Make a peace that is strong and not weak. De-escalate this crisis. We hear of wars and rumours of wars, but let you, you Lord, are our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer. My hope is in you. So we address the nations now in the name of Jesus. We say, be still and know God. He is exalted among the nations. He shall be exalted in the earth. Please listen to us, O Lord. Kyrie, 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 God of peace and justice. We pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort could draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you should hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, 
a prince of peace. Please listen to us, O Lord. Kiwi, kiwi, eleison. Kiwi, kiwi, eleison. We pray for those who we love but see no longer, who have had such influence in our lives, and who we expect to meet again in your eternal kingdom. We also pray before you all who have lost their lives in the conflict no matter what side they may be on. None of any nation want to die in war. Merciful Father, sit in the for the sake of your son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Once we were far off, but now, in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of his peace. And our offer to him for this morning is great is thy faithfulness.
our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord, sing our final hymn for this morning, which is Lift High the Cross.
Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all those you love and care for, this day and always. Amen. Amen. We say together. God, every time and place, you hold each moment to share each day. Pride and your spirit.